limit points and long gaps between times. Thank you. Uh, happy birthday to And uh, I was expecting to write on the blackboard, so now for the first time in my life I'm using a document reader. Seems like a reasonable thing. So, uh, first of all, I should say this is joint work with Tristan Freiberg, and we're interested in. Prime, and we're particularly concerned about yeah, the difference PN plus 1 minus PN. And uh, so we have an earliest problem. So uh, the DN, we take this sequence, we form a sequence. Of course, this is in some sense 1 on average DN over log N, but he thought <coughs> that uh, uh, M we should. Could be dense. The, of course, all these are non negative numbers, so <coughs> you believe it should be dense, and uh, we certainly can't prove that, but uh, Hildebrand and Meyer did prove a beautiful result on the measure of uh, the set of limits. T somewhere here is a limit to the subsequence of these. Um, T, well, we better take it between zero and capital T where we think this is tending to infinity. So they show that uh, this, let's say that's mu T, and they show that mu T is at least C times T where C is some positive constant. That's one of our themes. Uh, let's make the sea as large as we can. And uh, obviously that's a good challenge. Um, so another aspect of our work is uh, how large can be and DNT. Well, let's see, this was the record for many years. Let's write this ranking function. This is log. T, log, log, T, log, iterated four times T over log three T all squared. So this is the record for many years. Was uh, DN as at least kappa R of DN. So a good bit bigger than the average gap. <coughs> is around the log, the main factor here is the log log. And uh, kappa gradually increased. So, uh, people in the audience who are <coughs> part of this. Um, and of course, I mean intimately often, to measure how often the gap is large. Um, so, we have a, a new record, and we now know uh, uh, DN is at least, well, bit bigger. Uh, a little constant times R of Pn times the log 3 of Pn. So we've knocked off one of those in the denominator. And the C is a, a small positive constant. And again, we mean infinitely often, of course. Uh, this is due to five guys. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate it like this because I have to refer to it several times. So when I write that, it's <coughs> Ford, Green, Conyardian, uh, Maynard, and Town. So this is a, a wonderful paper. And uh, <coughs> as a matter of fact, I think there are four talks that are going to be in this conference that refer to different aspects of this. So I hope I not going to just duplicate what's in those, I don't think so. Um, <coughs> well, <coughs> so a reasonable question would be to normalize question. So, if uh, f of t is just a little bit smaller than, uh, let's 
say r t log 3t. If there's anything lower down the scale than that, show that uh, the limit points of well, we normalized it, but maybe it didn't normalize by um, f of p n. Um, well, occupied greater than or equal to z dash t measure in zero t. So really, um, it's sort of combining two questions, you know, I would like to know that there are as many limit points as possible, normalizing by um, log p n. But uh, if you know that, that they can be as large as this, infinitely often as large as this, well, why not try to get uh, limit points of these uh, normalized with uh, this larger function? So, well, you'd expect some conditions on little f. It should be. Um, in, let's say it's in the logarithmic scale. You can put right down some unpleasant conditions, but any, anything in the logarithmic scale should work. So, as, as a, uh, so let's uh, fix on, just so we've got something definite in mind, f equals f star of t, which is uh, uh, log t log 2t over log 3t. So that is one of I've knocked off the log 4, since that will give me a little bit of room for manoeuvre. So, just for the sake of the tool, keep that one definitely in mind, and that one, of course, would have been totally out of reach before FG KMT. Okay, so that's the theorem. Uh, we have a theorem about this, and uh, so L F star is the set of limit points. of uh, dn over f star pn as a placeholder choice of nomination. <coughs> and so then given alpha 1 up to alpha 5, well, let's put them in like this, uh, 1 of alpha j minus alpha i possible choices, uh, i less than j, I suppose. One of the non-negative ones is in our side. That's a curious form of uncertainty. You should often see an analytic number theory. <coughs> we know that one of these differences will be a limit point, but we don't know, we can't say which one. So from there you can get uh, a, a sort of corollary that uh, measure L star F. It's just a fairly straightforward exercise to get this is a quarter minus little o of one times. L star of F and L F star the same. L star of F and L F star. Yes, that's the same thing. So. Well, stars are well known to move around the cosmos. <laughs> um, so that's with this a quarter minus O of 1 <coughs> times T. So that's your, um, your, your constant that uh, uh, I could also get for anything sort of lower down than F star as well. So I, get, I can get 25%. And I should say that with uh, 9 instead of 5, and uh, Rather smaller functions, rather smaller functions like the original functions like uh, f, the original one I suppose would do, but uh, uh, this is due to, um, so they had nine numbers, this is due to uh, Banks, Maynard and uh, Free Private, Banks, Private, Maynard. Um, Maynard and the uh, nine goes to five. Uh, really, is due to Janos Pint. He introduced a, a weighting device. Whether I'm going to have time to talk about it or not, it's uh, we largely adapted for it from his paper. So I have to say, this is a paper where we uh, drew a huge 
huge amount of work from other people. FGKMT was the most, but then uh, BFM, as I refer to it, uh, we also took a great deal from, and then this uh, rather nice uh, improvement from Pips's preprint. Okay, so let's, uh, let's say a little bit about this. Obviously, you would expect, <laughs> I can't say a huge amount, so let's take X to be a large number, and N is, we're going to sort of introduce various functions, C, X over eta, where C is large, they each play a separate role, you might think I could manage with only one, uh, um, but it's convenient to have these two separate <laughs> parameters. Um, so then I'm going to take Y to be related to like this, it's, uh, this function, and uh, sorry I'm going to have to introduce a couple more of uh, x to the log 3x, this is kind of an easy <coughs> object which isn't quite as closely specified. So if you've looked at the paper of FGKMT, you know that they use these three sets of primes, so s is the set of s prime with uh, in between these two ranges or, or limits. I mean, mainly what you see is uh, the hairy arms. <laughs> you know, sometimes, obviously, I moved out of the way. Um, so, uh, I need two other sets of primes to follow their construction, which is basically what we're going to do for part of the paper. This is just prime to chin x over 2 x, and then you take q to be <coughs> q prime x less than q less than to y. So you've sort of taken three sets of primes, it doesn't cover everything. And you, you're given a set, later on we'll specify, but for the moment you can be given any set of k prime to where you think of k as large with fitness. So here is a theorem that will look familiar if you've read FGKMT. Now you people in the audience have read it. Uh, so this is a variant of FGKMT. Well, I need another bit of notation. Uh, a mod s is just, this object is is a, an infinite set, it's an arithmetic progression. So that's an arithmetic. S of A, if you've got all the vectors, <coughs> if you take uh, all the uh, primes in X, then you have to use this, uh, well, that's for all S belonging to S. So that would make sense if A itself. <coughs> is a vector of residue classes A, S, S, N. So you're taking a subset of the integers that avoids all these uh, residue classes, the different prime modula. So the variant is, so there exists uh, A, which is an A, S, mod S, a vector like that. And another one corresponding to these middle-sized primes, BP, so I call that one B, equals BP mod P, with P belonging to P. And, uh, well, two things. First of all, I want to keep H. I do not want to wipe it out. So those should not be exceptions there. So. not be in this sort of missing set, uh, or this set SA intersection bit. But I want it to have a paucity property that within Q, these are rather rare. If you're in both S of A and S of B, then in proportion to the size of Q, it's a rarity. So that should be less than X over log S. 
So if you've had a look at uh, FGKMT, you know, it looks exactly like that, except there's no mention of a set H. All you want to do is get this <coughs> subset of Q to be small. So how do we, how do we change it? Um, well, to cut a long story short, and the long story occupies more than half of the page, but uh, the, the way you construct A and B is a beautiful probabilistic construction. So we change the probability space so that it will produce this extra property, and then we just do the whole thing again, uh, checking the details very carefully. So once you've got that, this is fairly, fairly easy. Um, you can write H in this form. It's the set of points in the integers lying between X and Y for which um, we're not in any of a certain set of arithmetic progressions. And in some sense, their, their existence matters more and more. They look like you only need to go up to CX and um, you, but we're not allowed to delete a particular P star. What is P star? P star is what you call, I'm sure it's not a technical term, but you call it a nuisance term. What is it? Well, we want to use some sort of Bombieri Vinograd or theory, and uh, certain exceptional characters, not the usual one necessarily. But there will be one exceptional type kept belonging to, so it's the largest prime factor of the conductor of some character. Chi styles is basically a nuisance character. It resembles, shall we say, in its role, the uh, exceptional character that we find in, say, that of course, but it is not quite the same thing. Uh, well, it could be the same character, but it doesn't matter. Um, so, what, how do I mean that I want some sort of uh, Bombieri Vinogradov theorem? Well, the errors in, in Bombieri Vinogradov look like this. You've got sort of maps over all A co prime to Q. You add, add up all the log P's with uh, P less than <coughs> So notice that uh, you know when you use Bombieri Vinograd, it's exponentially larger uh, capital N than the little x that we started with. And uh, but this is p common to a mod q, and you take away just the sort of expected value. Okay. So so uh, this is due basically to BFM. Um, we can get this, that there is, uh, uh, well, we get the adder log of BV, of BV. But we have to average over, averaging over, what sort of Q do we need? Well, Q is a multiple of RW. W is this smooth modulus by P less than equal to E to log of the, avoiding the nuisance prime. The Q is RW, well, R, um, you go up to uh, basically into the half minus the size, essentially. And, but you, you focus on R co, co prime to both W and P star. So, you think about how the Bombieri Vinogradov theorem was originally done. You, it was done by looking at uh, um, contributions from, you know, like in the explicit formula for these, these sorts of sums, and you sort of make up a, a careful estimate of all the contributions from uh, different characters, from L zeros and L functions of different characters. And that's why you have to throw out P star for something as nice as this. Well, normally, of course, the role of W would be played by 1 in the ordinary from the area being a guard of zero. Well, so that's just one, that's one component. Um, now, let me go on a little bit just so you can see 
uh, what sort of objects, uh, the sort of the arithmetic object we're going to work with. Otherwise, we'll never get to the end. The arithmetic object is a n equals. So you've got to work. You've got to sum something. So h. Well, what is h? May not have time to say. But it's a carefully chosen set of k n. So this is the indicator function of the prime, this thing. Uh, you take away three, and you take away a fifth of the same sort of thing counted in pairs. So it was one to five. Well, H is the union of five six. <coughs> five. Um, okay, one P come down here, sigma h and h dashed not in belonging to hj, h not equal to h dash uh, 1 p <coughs> n plus h times. So you'll see expressions like this in Banks, Freiburg, Maynard. This is the modified version with Pitts' idea for a different weighting, which produces the the improved result that I mentioned. So I'll just put this in inverted commas. If a n is greater than zero, then p, this is the prime, the number of n plus h j getting a prime in two of these translates. So that's uh, greater than equal to one for at least two values of j. Well, can we now see of j equals 1 up to 5. Can we now sort of see our way to why we're doing this a little bit? Let's suppose we were able to get those two j's. Well, then um, that it would mean that so you've got, if, if I've chosen these primes correctly, you'd get about the right sort of spacing. But you've got to worry about the consecutivity. consecutivity. You might very well have found primes with the right spacing, that's fine, but what about all primes in between? This is where this bond here, partly where this comes in. Um, so what we do, we work with, see, obviously I have to average over n, so you take all the n's in here, and say 2n, uh, n is congruent to b, a carefully chosen congruence class to this uh, this number w, um, a n. We have to put in Maynard um, tau type weights. This is a Maynard tau type weight. So the way we know how to do these things involving sets of translates is using these Maynard tau weights. Now what is the purpose of this? This produces the consecutivity. By the way, I set up my original construction, which we've kind of lost, but if I go back to, let's see. Yes, if I go back to here, thing at the very bottom here. The way I set it up, if I can just get my ends in there, um, in, uh, if I can just get my uh, ends to be congruent to B mod W, you have to think about it a bit, but it arranges for none of the integers in between these carefully constructed N plus H's. So, you know, if you've got uh, an N plus P1 found in this way, and an N plus so, uh, n plus q1 and n plus q2 are found this way. This way. They are consecutive points. That's the use of this n is common to b mod w. And that's where we make this very heavy dependence on fgk and c. <coughs> so, you know, any construction in which you're trying to get these limit points, you've got to be able to find some primes to find from. Well, 
Well, um, so how do you deal with this A N new H of N? Well, I'll just put A N back on the screen for a minute. Um, it looks sort of like you would find in Maynard's, either of Maynard's papers on uh, small gaps between primes. So it sort of looks reasonably familiar that this sort of thing should come out. Yeah, this is why you need K to be large, you remember, so that you know one of the large sets of translations should come out, uh, or, or more than one of the large sets of translations should come out finally. Yeah, we're going to obviously have, to have this three subtractive of What about this one over here? This one is a bit of a strange <coughs> thing, but it turns out you have to do it by a sieve up a bound. You can't leave this guy asymptotically if you're sort of looking at twin prime kind of thing. So you have to do it with a, a fairly standard sieve up a bound, again, with the main art weight in it. So it turns out that uh, the way I set it up with five, the roll of five, which appears here, um, is just within the capacity of, uh, of the map. Um, so, let me see, what have I really uh, not said very much about? There are two, um, two completely different accounts of the, the use of these weights, which are slightly different. One of them is in the Maynard papers, and the other one is in this one of the two very long poly maps papers on the subject. And it turns out that Banks, Frick, Freiburg and Maynard are to go to the polymath version because that is the more convenient one to use. So I should mention that that uh, feeds into it <coughs> as well. Um, so let's, let's just review very briefly before I stop. Um, you've got really um, you couldn't sort of couldn't use such a large normalization factor without having FG KMT, without having that construction, which is this beautiful probabilistic thing that uh, uh, a certain set is almost nothing about, but it does take 40 pages and it's going to appear in at, uh, uh, sorry, in panels of, of mathematics. Then you need the construction of banks. Freiburg and Maynard. Now what you notice when you start, if you look at the reprint, for instance, or the various components of it, you notice that James Maynard's work is used in two different ways. One is um, the one I just mentioned. I wrote down the expression A and it's talked about those weights. But, already, but if you go back to FGKMT, you see that there's this rural nibble method, and you know the whole thing is going to depend on uh, work that, that James did in, in, in a, his second paper on small gaps. So you just use that as, as one lemon. So you've got two entirely different ways in which this work is. Well, okay, I'll stop there. Any questions?